Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good to be with you in God's house and also connected to the folks worshiping online. This is the day the Lord has made and we're glad to rejoice in it. I'm excited to worship this morning. Uh, we are still in Jeremiah 29, exile in the Lord's blessing. Uh, I, I intentionally spread out the study of this passage over a number of weeks, uh, which has been kind of like you know, a mini course meal and the little kid waiting for dessert. And today we're getting to one of the verses in that chapter uh, that just excite me so much. I'm, I'm, I've had to wait three weeks to get here and I'm, I'm excited to look at verse seven today and what it has to teach us uh, in this particular time. So I wanna invite you into worship now using Psalm 85 and you have a part, you in the room and you online uh, to respond to me. And we're gonna read several verses. This, I chose this because it strikes me as the kind of prayer that the exiles might have prayed, that some of us might pray to God. How long is this going to go on? When are you going to show up? When are you going to make things right, Lord? Um, so let's, let's use this as we enter into worship this morning. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cause your indignation towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not yourself revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your loving kindness, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people, to his godly ones, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Come, let us worship the Lord. I invite you to reflect on the, the songs, uh, the, the words of uh, the song the worship team is going to share with us now called By Our Love. come together walking in the spirit there's much to be done we will come reaching out from our comforts and they will know us by our love sisters we were made for kindness we can pierce the darkness as he shines through us we will come reaching with a song of healing and they
time is now. Come church, arise. Love with His hands. See with His eyes. Bind it around you. Let it never leave you. And they will know us by passing of the peace this morning is also responsive. It's adapted from Psalm 122, which is a prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. We've used this before, but I invite you to read the yellow parts in response to me. A prayer for peace. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your towers. For the sake of my family and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our scripture reading this morning uh, comes from Jeremiah 29, and the primary text is verse 7, but I'm going to back up just to remind you of the context and read Verses 4 through 7. Listen, this is God's word. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Melissa Lancaster has our word for children this morning. I direct you to the screen. Hello everyone, it's January and we're back and starting a new year together. Pastor Robert is preaching a new series um, from the book of Jeremiah um, about being in exile. And I want us to think for a few minutes. We have been doing this pandemic thing um, for about 11 months now. We're getting ready to be to February, which is the only month of the last 12 that we have not been in some sort of um, pandemic mode, which is kind of crazy to think about. But I want you to think about how life uh, might have been changed during this time, but in some positive ways. So today I want us to think about um, neighbors, people you may have met. Um, What did you do when you were home all those months back last spring? You know, it made me think about, at our house, we were home, Millie and Maddie and I, Russ was working, and every day, almost every day, we loaded up the wagon with some toys and snacks, and we took a walk in our neighborhood down to what my girls lovingly call the play park. It's a big open green space in the middle of houses um, around in our neighborhood. And we would picnic, we'd blow bubbles, we'd throw the ball, Um, We do all sorts of things. We'd spend a couple hours there every morning. And one thing that stuck out to me when I was thinking about who is my neighbor, uh, this lady, an elderly lady, I think she actually turned 90 or 91 one day when we were over there, lived on the edge of this play park. And each day she came out for a walk at about the same time we were over there. And she would have her walker and she'd walk around the circle and she'd stop and talk. And she'd walk around the circle, and then she'd go back in, and she'd see us the next day, and she would come out and talk. Sweetest little lady. Um, Her grandchildren were grown in college, um, and she loved to watch Millie and Maddie play. And um, we kind of struck up this little relationship. Nothing more ever came of it, but I do think about her. We pray about her. Um, And 
we go by her house now, and some days I think we should leave her something, and we haven't done that yet, but it's on our list. Um, but it, it made me think, who are my neighbors? And we brightened her day when she couldn't get out. She couldn't go anywhere other than around her block. Um, but it definitely brightened her morning when she saw us over there, and the girls would talk to her and and interact with her. Um, in the same way, our, our real side door neighbor... Um, is a lady who is a grandmother too and she would come over and sit on our back patio six feet away from us and just watch Millie and Maddie and play talk and play while we talked and shared things and I'm just thinking of all the things that that meant to those two ladies um, and we would have never in a million years done that on a regular schedule um, but I want you to think about who God put into your path during this time is it a new neighbor is it um, somebody, I even thought about picking up groceries at Walmart and being just kind to the person who put them in your car um, and saying thank you, have a great day um, in a really busy and stressful situation for them. So you think about it. Who is your neighbor? Who did you come into contact with during this time that maybe you made a difference that you're not even aware of by just being kind and polite? Um, God put them there for a reason, even if we don't know why and we don't understand it. Um, God knows. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for today, and I thank you for these children and our church. And we pray for those that we may have crossed paths with during the last um, nearly a year of God, that people that crossed our paths that we would have never met before, um, just being home and being still for this time, they came across our path. And we pray for them. We pray that we made a difference just with a smile or a kind word. Um, and we continue to pray that you cross paths with us daily um, as we meet people and as we move about in our world um, today. God, we thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. And let's pray before the sermon. Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy word to us and your Holy Spirit who meets us faithfully to help us hear and understand and obey your word. Would you now speak through me the words you'd have us hear and help us to listen and respond in faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you're looking at your bulletin, uh, this title is not what you're looking at, but I, I changed it three times this week and the bulletin had already gone to press. And I, it's all the same sermon, but I finally decided this, this title had the most to do with what I was talking about today on being well and finding peace. We have talked in recent weeks about out of Jeremiah 29, about uh, all that we've lost, or at least perceived that we've lost in the last nine months, 12 months. We've talked last week about how God, um, though it, it may feel to us as it did to the exiles, like God has somehow forgotten us or turned away from us. In fact, God declares that he sees us he hears us and listens to us. God is with us, and God has a purpose for us even now in the midst of uh, the, the challenges we're facing, just as God was with and saw and heard and had a purpose for his people there in Babylon. We started the service with Psalm 85, which was asking some of those questions that the exiles asked, that maybe you and I have asked, God, are you angry with us? Uh, how long will this last? Won't you revive us and heal us and restore us to what has been lost? And the answer broadly to all those questions from God in Scripture is yes, but what you're going through now has, is not being wasted. It has a purpose, and I have a plan and Jeremiah 29, this letter that, that God speaks through this letter and Jeremiah to his people, has some of that, yes, this is what's going on right now. This is what God would have us do. So there, yeah, those are some of the questions asked in our call to worship this morning. Um, God, when will you restore us? Will your anger ever end? Will you revive us again? And I love that they kind of snuck in so that we can rejoice, you know, so we can... Um, you know, praise you, show us your loving kindness. And then this, which, which is perhaps the most important part, I will listen to the Lord. 
And what a great way to pray, right? To pour out our needs and wants and longings to the Lord, but end by declaring, I'll listen, God, what do you have to say to me? It reminds me of the way Jesus taught us to pray by by saying, Lord, your will be done. And Jesus modeled several several prayers in the New Testament where he he was struggling and suffering, but he, he concluded them with, Father, but your will be done. Well, I want to turn to the first part of our passage today. Um, in verses 5 and 6, in the last week or two, we've, we've recognized that for the exiles and, and for us, in one sense, everything had changed, right? Health and location and business and relationships and the place of worship and the way of worship. Everything had been uprooted and overturned by that defeat from Babylon and and. Uh, We feel much of that in all that has had to change in the last nine months. But though in a sense everything had changed, we also talked last week about how nothing has changed in terms of God's purpose for us and our ability to be faithful. God, God never says you can only be faithful when you are in this place or, um, in, in, you know, this, uh, situation. God says, you can always be faithful to me. And and that's the challenge of life, right? Is whether I'm in jail or in the house of the Lord, or I'm lost, um, or I'm thriving, whether I'm sick, whether I'm well, God's invitation is always to obedience, to um, trust, to faith, and to a little bit more as well. And we're going to see that unpacked today in in verse 7. So if God has just said to them in verses 4, 5, and 6, I'm with you, I see you, I love you, I know every, it feels like everything has changed, but listen, my people, nothing has changed, right? I still have a plan and a purpose for you. Now in verse 7, God is going to describe what that purpose is in this unusual, everything upside down, feel like I've lost it all place of Babylon. And he says simply this, I'll read verse 7 again. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. Wasn't an accident. The city where I've sent you. And pray to the Lord on its behalf. So seek and pray. It is, it's a radically other focused perspective that's made even more uh, amazing because the, the natural response to being displaced and having lost everything and being uncertain is to be self-focused, right? God, when will you deliver me? When will you help me? When do I get to go back to where I was before? Can't things be like they used to be? And God, God's word presses in the, the other direction and says, what I want you to do is focus on those around you. Seek their well-being, their welfare, and pray for their well-being and welfare. It is... It is the great application of that covenant with Abraham, their great ancestor, our ancestor in the faith. Remember the covenant, the the punchline was, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, so that you and your descendants will be a blessing to all the people of the world, other focused, right? And it's easy to think, oh, God's going to bless me. But, But the second half of that was, so that you can bless the world. And that's what this verse 7 seems to be unpacking, is what does that outward blessing look like, even in this unusual place? I want to talk for a minute about the word translated in uh, the translation we use as welfare. It is translating the Hebrew word shalom, which you have heard before. Um, That is one of those rich, rich words that we struggle to to capture in English uh, because it has so much breadth to it. Um, And in welfare, we we have our own kind of connotation of that. I think well-being is perhaps a more helpful translation of that. Seek the well-being of the city. Pray for the well-being of the city uh, on their behalf. It can also mean peace. It can mean wholeness. It can mean healing. It can be... Being right with God is one form of shalom. Being right with other people is a form of shalom. Right? I mean, it's tied to that love God and love, uh, love your neighbor. Shalom is the, 
um, the status of being with God and, and um, right with God. It's, it's whole, it's, it's blessed. It can also be translated uh, blessing. So you can, you can really substitute all that wealth of meaning into the sentence. The idea is that for, and, and think of who, who is the target here. Seek the, the blessing, the prosperity, the well-being, the peace of Babylon. The people that took you from your homes, that tore down the temple, that overthrew your government, that has captured your family and friends. Seek, not just pray for, but seek, actively work for the well-being of your captors. That's just startling. But it is, in fact, the the application of the, the covenant with Abraham. I'm with you, my people, so that you can bless all those around you. And it it never says so that you can bless the people that are good to you, but it's the whole world. Well, what about me, (laughs) right? If if you and I think about this last nine months, um, it's hard to get past. What about my needs and my welfare and my peace of mind, my well-being, my wholeness? Verse 7 also says, in the city's welfare, in the city's well-being, you will have well-being. God is saying through this letter in Jeremiah, when you seek the, the shalom of your opponents, your captors of the city of Babylon, that's when you will experience the thing that you're longing for. I know you're longing for it. I know you've been displaced and have lost so much and you're just longing to get back home. The thing you want, the very most, this this shalom, this this restoration and wholeness and healing, here's how you're going to find it. Seek and pray for that for them. And in doing that, you will experience my shalom. It's probably not a sermon that they stood up and cheered for, but it's from the Lord. Unless we write that off to, well, that was a very unique and special situation. Jesus preached the same thing. Uh, In Luke, in a parallel message to the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus, after saying, love your enemies, do good to them, and be merciful to them as your Father is merciful to you, in Luke 6, 38, Jesus says, give and it will be given to you, right? Bless others, give uh, shalom away, and it will be given to you. And not just in equal measure, not just this for that, but this, uh, this phrase, in good measure, press down, running over, as much as you can, you know, grain as you can spill, squeeze into the container and then overflowing. That's how you will receive when you give. And, and of course, you know, Jesus uh, preached, uh, love your neighbor, love your enemy. He said, it's easy to love those who love you. And it's easy to look out for yourself. But Jesus, in line with Jeremiah, and I would say even in line with the covenant with Abraham, was, was other focused and said, in blessing them, you will be blessed. In fact, and I'm guilty of this, I, I routinely present Abraham's covenant as, um, as something we experience. God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. But what Jeremiah says, and, and that is true, but what Jeremiah says and what Jesus says is that in addition to that, you are blessed when you are a blessing. Right? It's not just I get God's blessing and I, I share from that abundance. Jeremiah and Jesus seem to say that I receive God's blessing when I seek and pray for the well-being and the wholeness and the healing and the peace of others. So if shalom, this this sense of well-being, of peace, of wholeness, of restoration is something that we long for, and I think it is, here's what uh, God's prescription for that is. 
This is taken from the context of Jeremiah, but I think makes so much sense for us as well. Wherever you find yourself, right, whether you uh, feel like things are going well for you or you're really struggling, God says, wherever you are, you can be faithful to me. Live full and godly lives in whatever circumstance you find yourself in. That sounds like the Apostle Paul, right? In whatever circumstances, I rejoice. And seek and pray for the shalom, the well-being of those around you. I want to suggest a couple of uh, variations on what that might look like, knowing that the application is endless. One that's obviously right in front of us, right, is is mask wearing. If you're low risk, if you're a 15-year-old, healthy, There's no reason for yourself particularly to wear a mask, but the the government and we and your parents uh, have probably asked you to do that because it is for the well-being of those around you. It's one reason here at church we have masking and distancing. It's it's not just so that each one of you will have uh, some barrier against getting sick. It's for the sake of each other and the person you know, two pods over from you that may be high risk. It is a form of um, seeking shalom, well-being for our community. I think we all recognize the political and cultural divide in our country right now. And seeking and praying for those we disagree with doesn't mean you have to start agreeing that it sure would shape the way you interact with um, someone you disagree with. What would, what would it look like if we sought and prayed for the well-being of those we might consider opponents or even enemies? I think that would radically change the conversation and the interactions. And, and if it could be multiplied out, the whole dynamic. Having said that, the only person we can choose as far as ourself so it has to begin with me but that's something we can each do beyond those two obvious things covid and politics and all that i think about jesus basic teaching in general love of neighbor and love of enemies what does that look like to seek and pray for those around us maybe it's just people we don't know but what do lives oriented away from self towards others what impact does that have for the glory of God and for the kingdom? I mean, that's, that's what God is trying to teach his people in Jeremiah's day. It's what Jesus taught time and time again. And I think it's helpful to have the, the, the idea, the concept of shalom as we pray, as we act. What would it mean in our city, our neighborhoods, our community, to seek and pray for the, the well-being of, you know, differences aside, politics and all that, what do people need in our city, in our community, and in our schools, and down the street from us, next our side door neighbor? What do they need, and how can I, how can you seek and pray for that? And Melissa's, again, we, we don't really coordinate this, but um, so good, right? God, things are different. God's calling is the same, and, and she, she saw these two opportunities to seek the well-being of these two uh, women that she was in contact with. How can we do that and, and multiply that out as God's people? I know it's hard. Th- this is the hardest time to do that, as it was for the exiles, right? This is the time when most I want to hunker down and say, God, just... Make it better for me and my family and my loved ones, right? I'll get back to work when all this is over. We're worn down. We're frustrated. We're fearful. We feel diminished. But God's message remains. And I want you to hear that good news that that is just from cover to cover in Scripture. God says, I am not unaware of your situation. I see you. I hear you. I'm listening for you. It's not just when we make enough noise, God hears us, but I'm listening to you. I am with you, God says, and I have a plan and a purpose for you that is glorious. 
whatever the circumstance, even this circumstance in which you find yourself. You know, Jeremiah 29 is, no, is probably most known for a verse we haven't gotten to yet, where God says, I have a plan and a purpose for you. But this is all the, the context for that verse we're going to get to, and I'll be excited when we get there. Um, but this is, this is the meaning of it, right? God has a mission and a purpose for us, even in a, a, a year and a situation like we're facing now. I mean, what good news that is in the face of our frustration and discouragement and exhaustion. Um, God is good. So may God give us ears to hear and hearts to respond in faith and in faithfulness. Amen. Each week we pray a prayer of confession in response to the word that we've heard. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Therefore, let us confess. Lord, so often we put our own welfare and peace above that of others. Give us a heart for others first, for our family, for our neighbors, and for our community. Let's have a moment for silent confession. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice and hear the good news. Ephesians 1, 7 tells us that in Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace. Thank God for his mercy and grace. As we do every week, we choose the music to support uh, the, the scripture and the message that we're focused on, uh, recognizing that uh, sometimes music can, can get through blockades that, that mere words uh, cannot. This, this offering of music today by Eric and Rick uh, is a hymn called See My Hands and Feet in response to uh, God's command to love. So I've, we've put more of the words on the screen so you can kind of take them all in. Uh, but I invite you to reflect on the message you've heard today as we listen to this. Touch that truth that heals the hurting hands that break a loaf of bread, steps that walk beside the weary, bearing burdens in their stead. See my Bye. Uh-huh.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word through Jeremiah to your people, to us. It is a hard word to hear. Um, to, in a time where so many of us feel hard-pressed to, to lift our gaze outward, um, we pray that you would not only convict us of what it means to live out um, blessing in the world to others, even to opponents and adversaries, but that you would present us with good opportunities this week and the days that come. And give us eyes to see them, whether it be a side door neighbor or someone that we see at the grocery store or someone that we connect with on the phone or online. Whatever it may be, Lord, would you shape us into people who are radically other-focused for you, for your glory, that the whole world might come to know and come to understand uh, your, your expansive love for the world. Lord, we do pray for healing and wholeness uh, among our own church family. Uh, we lift up Bill Woods to you and Mike McKenzie and their, their families. We thank you for seeing them through um, trips to the hospital this past week and pray for their ongoing uh, health and care. Uh, we pray for uh, others who are discouraged, uh, who are feeling isolated uh, by your spirit and through our calls and reaching out, would you help, help us connect? Lord, as we continue to, to strive to be a faithful church in this city, in this community, would you lead our leaders? Would you give us ears to hear? Would you lead our congregation, lead our young people, that we would hear your voice and respond in obedience and in joy to wherever you lead us? Because we do trust you and we do love you. Would you hear us now as we pray in the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive now this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you this week, that you might be a blessing to those around you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.